One of the first steps in our running our electrical circuits is going to be setting our boxes. There's a process to do this and we can't run our cables unless we know where they're going to terminate, which would be in our junction boxes. I've made this mock-up in our classroom here. This is sort of simulating a wall and we're going to set a box in here that would accept an outlet. So I'll go ahead and make a mark at 12 inches up and I'm going to make the mark at 12 and 3 quarters. The reason for that is I want to take into account our finished floor which is typically going to be a 3 quarter inch thick material say like hardwood. So this will be the place where I'll mount my junction box and I'm going to go ahead that's going to be the bottom of my junction box. It's often that code would tell us if we had to set our boxes they need to be a minimum of 12 inches off of the floor. That is one code that you might hear and might have to adhere to. So I'm going to hold this box up against this stud. This is the placement that I like and as you can see I've set that box forward of my stud using these stops on the box here. I'm using those up against my stud. That's going to hold it forward which will account for some finished materials like drywall later. So I'm going to hold it on my mark and I can set those nails tap them in. Now the box is going to hold itself. I can go ahead and drive those nails in all the way. So when those nails are tight I don't need to go any further. If you drive those nails too far it's going to start to deform that junction box. So you want them tight but not too tight if that makes any sense. Now it's time to run our Romex cable. So we're going to have a run of cable and I'll take this piece here and what I'm doing here is I'm setting an outlet in this box. So this cable according to my plans is going to come in from the top and now this cable needs to come into this box in the back in one of these knockouts. So at this point I need to open this knockout in the back and I'm going to do that with just any tool we're going to pop it out and that is going to free up a space to pull our Romex through. If I have a choice of opening up a knockout I always want it near to my the, the closest one to my framing if, especially if I only have one cable. And we need to pull that cable through so that I have a good six to eight inches forward of the front edge of the box. This will give us enough length of conductors to work with to attach to our device then push it all in, pack it in so we can finish this off later. So my next step now that I have my cable run is I need to secure this cable to my framing. We need to drive our staples in around our Romex very carefully. We don't need any damage to the jacket and we need a couple of staples in this particular circumstance. We need one just as the cable leaves the box within 12 inches of the box and then if we have any length of cable after that we need one every 54 inches no more than that length for any other runs of cable. Driving our staples is critical. As you see here you're looking at some bad examples of how cable can be damaged by a staple that's driven improperly. The one on the top left is driven too far. You have pressure on the conductors inside. This one is starting to shear or damage the conductors and the insulation of this Romex cable. The one in the middle on the right, the, the uh, one side of the cable or one side of the staple has actually pierced the cable. This could be shorting out any conductor inside and turns into a fire hazard. The one at the bottom is obviously driven poorly. The staple is not driven straight and it's going directly through the conductor. So none of these are ideal. The, the ideal one would be the slide before and that would be the one that mounts nice and solid and securely to the cable. So let's go ahead and put a cable in as this staple or as this cable leaves the box. I'm going to go ahead. You want your cable flat to the stud that you're working on and I like my staples a little closer than 12 inches and I'm going to go ahead and set it and now I can drive it and I'm going to drive it a 
until it grabs that cable and no further. So I'm not overdriving it. We want it in there nice and straight. It needs to hold, but not damage that cable. And we'll go ahead and put another staple in. Code says that I'm not, I am definitely not over 54 inches here, but I'm just gonna put another one in to hold this nice and tight to the framing. So I'll go ahead and set that staple. Now I can hold the wire flat against that stud and I'll drive it in. As you see, I've used two different styles of staples. They both do the same thing. And now I have two staples driven, I've got a nice tight wire, and I have a very secure situation here that I can then finish it out.